when we have an asynchronous method, in general, we want to return one of the following data types, task, task of t, value task, and value task of t. We'll talk about value task later. For now, we will work with task. The task data type represents an asynchronous operation. It is basically a promise that the operation to be executed will not necessarily be concluded immediately, but that it will be concluded in the future. What is the difference between task and task of t? Although we use both of them for the return data type of an asynchronous method, the difference is that task is for methods that do not return a value, while task of t is for methods that do return a value of type t, where t can be any data type, such as a string, int, a class, etc. We know from basic C -sharp that a method that does not return a value is marked with void. This is something to avoid in asynchronous methods. An exception to this rule are event handlers, just like the one we have that responds to the click of the start button. Let's see an example. We are here in Visual Studio and let's say that we want to centralize this operation that we have here into its own method. So let's do that. Let's go here, let's say private, async, and we have to say task. Why do we have to say task here? Because we're going to have an asynchronous method. So let's say something like wait, for example, and then I will cut this from here and I will paste it here. And as you can see, we don't have any errors. And that is because this is an asynchronous method. And because it is asynchronous, I can use the wait operator and I can wait for this in an asynchronous manner, which means that we're not going to block the current thread because of this operation. Now, how do we use this wait method that we just created? Well, we can go here and we can say wait, which is this method that we have here. Now, we see some green squiggly lines under the wait method. Why is that? It is because this method returns a task. And because it does return a task, then it means that this should be a promise. And basically here, we are being informed that if we don't use the await operator, we're not going to wait for this operation to finish. Which means that once we get to this line of code, the next one is going to execute immediately if we don't use the await operator. Let's make an experiment. Let's go here. Let's say message box and let's say show. I want to display a message. So let's say five seconds have passed. And we're going to see that we're not going to use the wait operator. And therefore, we're not going to wait for this, which means that this line of code will execute immediately. It doesn't matter that we're using an await here because with this await, we are suspending the execution of this method that we have here, but not of this method that we have here, because the wait is here, the wait is not here. So let's do that. Let's press Ctrl F5 to run our application, and let's go here and let's click on Start. And you're going to see that we got this message right away. That is because we are not using the await operator. Now let's see what happens if we use the await operator. Let's close this. And let's say here, await. Now the first thing that you're going to see is that we don't have any green squiggly line anymore. And with this await, we are saying, hey, wait for this operation to finish before running these lines of code that we have here. So let's press Ctrl F5 to see that. Let's click on start. And you're going to see that we didn't get any message immediately, but we will get the message once five seconds have passed. And as you can see here, that is indeed the case. Which means that if we want to have a method that is going to be asynchronous and we're not expecting to return a value from it, we can use task as the return type. And we need to do that because if we say void here, you are going to see that we get an error here because we cannot wait void. We can only wait task, task of t, and value task and value task of t. So we are indeed obligated to use task here if we want to be able to await 
asynchronously the operation. Now, as we mentioned before, there is an exception to this rule, and that is event handlers. This is an example of an event handler. And in the case of event handlers, we can use void for async methods without any issues. There is no problem in doing this, but this is the only exception to the rule. In general, outside of event handlers, we always, always, always have to use task, task of t, value task, or value task of t for the return type of an asynchronous method, just like we're doing here.